Now that we have our tables created, we're going to use the Codesmith product that we installed last week to create our stored procedures. We'll also end up creating the SQL scripts that we'll need to install this module into another .NET Nuke installation. So the first thing we need to do is to fire up Codesmith. Under the .NET Nuke folder that we attached last week, you'll see the stored procedures CST file. That's actually a script that we're going to run. Double click that. And the first thing we want to do is tell it what tables we want to run. So click multi-source table, click the ellipse button, and then select what data source you want to use. And one of the things, if you don't, if you haven't run this before, you'll probably want to go in here and add your own data source. So click and put in the name. Your provider is going to be SQL Schema Provider, and your connection string is going to be the connection string from your web config file. If you're using a uh, web config file or a database that uses the pipe data directory pipe specifier, in other words, your, your database that you're using is actually under app data in your .NET Nuke installation, you're going to want to make sure that you replace the pipe data directory pipe with the actual physical directory where your database is located or the connection string isn't going to work for you. And you can come in here and select some of the databases that you want to use. And it's a multi-select, so you can select as many databases that are in your uh, module that you're creating. And I, I normally leave everything else here the same. Um, you're going to want the, the deletes and the drops and the foreign keys. You're going to want the delete, add, list, get, and update, store procedures, and then put in your object qualifier. <clears throat> now, remember last week I told you to go ahead and prefix all of your table names with something unique about your organization. In my case, I do the MBC LLC. Uh, the reason for that is it's going to make it a whole lot easier for you to find your tables in the midst of 100 other tables of .NET Nuke uh, if you've prefixed them with a, a specific string. Uh, if you've got two or three tables that are prefixed with the MBC LLC, they're all right there together. Um, the other reason is uh, there are other companies that can, can create modules that are going to be creating tables into this .NET Nuke system, and you don't want to have a table name with exactly the same name as some other companies. Uh, this allows us some way of uh, having a unique table name, uh, kind of like namespaces in object-oriented programming. The other reason that you want to do this is the object qualifier here actually will get prefixed, uh, and we're going to see this object qualifier show up in some of our other wizards where it's more important, but it'll get prefixed onto a lot of the code that's being written. If it's um, if it sees the prefix there already, it won't prefix it. So since I've got database names or table names prefixed with DMBC LLC, and I've got an object qualifier here with DMBC LLC, uh, it's just not even going to put the object qualifier in there. Uh, and so it's going to give us a lot cleaner code. So once we've done that, we can hit the generate button. And what that's going to do is it's going to generate script over here. Now, a couple of things that you'll notice about this script. One is you've got this database owner tag. Uh, that is not a typical SQL tag. What that's going to do is when we run this script in .NET Nuke, uh, it's going to replace that database owner with DBO dot. Now, <clears throat> uh, one of the things that we can do in .NET Nuke is we can specify in the web config file who our database owner is. And, and if we want it to be XYZ, it'll replace that database owner with XYZ dot instead of DBO dot. The other thing is uh, in .NET Nuke, you can install .NET Nuke multiple times into the same database. And if you do that, what you need to do is you have to specify a separate, a separate object qualifier for each instance of .NET Nuke. Uh, and then this object qualifier right here will get replaced with that string. Uh, if there's no string there, that'll just get uh, the empty string. Now, what this means is every time you create a script that's going to be used in .NET Nuke, you need to make sure that everything uses the database owner and the object qualifier um, to specify your table names that you're dealing with or your foreign keys that you're uh, dealing with. 
Uh, the other thing that you'll want to do is you're going to want to make sure that any scripts, uh, any changes that you make to the database actually get scripted in. Now we're going to go ahead and copy and paste this because this is going to go into this 01.00.00.sql provider file, which I've already got open here. And the file that they give you is code uh, that the script produced for the, the demo module that was created for us and, and we're modifying. So we're going to delete all that script and we're going to paste in the script that was just created. Um, our first installation of .NET Nuclear use 01.00.00.sql provider. Uh, if we have any changes in the future, that'll be 01.00.01. And then .NET Nuke just reads the uh, the SQL data provider scripts uh, in the order that, that we created them uh, and puts those scripts into the file. So everything in .NET Nuke, all the scripts are always uh, Delta scripts from the previous installation. So the next thing we want to do here is we're going to run our .NET Nuke installation. Login as host. And under the host menu, there is this SQL menu option that has this window. We're going to paste in the same script that we were generated from the, uh, the CodeSmith. We're going to come down here and click this Run as Script button because we've got multiple goes in there. This Run as Script will actually see those goes and separate everything out as a separate. Uh, execution statements and then we'll cl click the execute button. I'm not going to do it because I've already got these scripts and we'll get errors, but that's how we can do it. Okay, and that'll give you about 80% of the SQL scripts that your system will need. The rest of them you're going to need to create yourself, but that takes a lot of the pain out of creating uh, the SQL scripts for the insert, update, deletes, gets, list, all that kind of stuff.